to the African Emergency Room. Here we discuss what healthcare professionals may term bizarre cases presenting in the emergency room. We discuss them so because they seem peculiar to Africa, maybe because of our traditional beliefs and religion. Today, we'll be discussing febrile convulsion, which is also called fever fit or febrile seizures. They are peculiar to us and they are of concern for us here in the African Emergency Room because over the years in Africa, people have seen convulsion and even epilepsy as a spiritual disease, and people stigmatize those who have these conditions. Another reason is because mothers don't just want to fold their hands and watch their children convulse and do nothing. So they want to be seen doing something. And then most of the time, they do the wrong things. Today we'll be discussing febrile convulsion. Welcome to the African Emergency Room. My name is Dr. Lex, and I'm here today with Dr. Ogo. Thank you. With us also is Dr. Onfon Kerry, who has years of experience in pediatrics and child care, and she will be speaking to us about febrile convulsions. Welcome, Dr. Kerry. Thank you, Dr. Lex and Dr. Go for having me. All right. Um, so you would have seen some of these bizarre presentations. Yeah. We'd like to know some of what you've seen. Okay, so, yeah, the, the most common one would be use of um, spoons in the mouth. Um, parents feel because the child is convulsing, child may bite off his tongue or hurt himself. So they force a spoon into the mouth to prevent the child from biting his tongue, basically. Um, is that wrong or right? Of course it's wrong. Of course it's but wrong. But about the bizarre ones, right? So yeah, everything I'm going to see right now is Because that's bizarre. so common. Like, it's done everywhere. Yes, it is. But, um, no, you're not supposed to do that. Um, other things you can see are uh, parents rubbing palm kernel all over the child's body. I mean, the child is running a fever and the child is like crazy hot and then you can't add palm kernel to the skin, which just makes it worse. Okay. And other things I've seen are people forcing concoctions like a mix of palm kernel oil with onion and garlic and ginger. I've seen someone rub engine oil on the child's body. I've seen people burn their kids. I've seen a mother right, right there in the hospital. Um, the child was convulsing and she ran into the emergency pediatric unit with the convulsing child. And, you know, we told her, okay, put the child on the couch. We started working on the child. And then while the nurse was about to give the medication, we just saw the mother running with a bottle of urine. Like, oh, ch like gone out to pee in the bottle and then came back to force the child to drink the urine. Like someone outside there just told her, go and pee in the bottle and give the child to drink. And she ran to save her child's life. It's how you okay. So, okay, I have actually seen something like that. During my housemanship, that was scary, actually. I was in chair, children emergency, and then this woman running with the baby. My baby has been convulsing, and then the baby started convulsing immediately. And then she dropped the baby on the floor, straddled the baby, and started peeing. She, direct into the face. I wanted to run out of the ER. The <laughs> nurses there were relaxed, like they've seen it before, but I was in shock, like, what?! Yeah, but that, it's so common. Um, yeah, but, okay, I've seen cow dunk. I've seen them mix cow dunk and urine. And what? And give the child. They rubbed it on the skin, then they gave the child to drink. Yeah, that wasn't a good story. That child <laughs> passed on. But, I mean, like, here we have so many interesting and ridiculous beliefs. So, and I get it. It's the panic it's the fear it's that the child is shaking violently and you don't know what to do so and so, so then it's like also the, the need to do something about, she heard that suggestion just as they got into the hospital as soon as she gave us the child she ran out and someone said pee and she peed and she brought it back like all of us were like madam what are you doing <laughs> God, sorry. madam what are you doing like stop stop what do you wow. think you're doing and it's she wants if she wants to try anything she can try to stop it so she I also guess, wants to. She yeah. also wants to be seen doing something. I mean, she wants a need to know to that she's doing, doing something. something like, yes. She doesn't care what you think, as long as she knows she's doing something. So any suggestion would work. At she can time. like mix cow dung. Like I'm sure anybody in her right thinking mind would, would never do, do that. that. Yes. So at that point, logic and common sense kind of goes out the window, and all you're thinking of is how can I help this child? Wow, Doctor Fun, thank you so far. You've been wonderful. Um, we're just going to take a break now and we will just be back. Stay tuned.
welcome back to the African ER. So far, we've been talking about febrile convulsions, and Dr. Kerry has been doing an amazing job of helping us navigate through the bizarre experiences that she has had in the ER. So now we've, we've heard quite a few of these bizarre presentations. Um, what are the right things to do? Okay, so um, first thing every parent needs to realize is that convulsions will stop. They will stop. There's nothing you have to do to stop the convulsions. The way convulsions are programmed to happen, they will happen for a certain amount of time and then they will stop. So you're doing more harm to the child than good if you try to force it to stop because it will stop. The things you need to do are first make sure that the child is safe. So you need to put the child in what we call left lateral position, just like the child on his side. And then you need to make sure that anything that can hurt the child that is lying in the area is removed. So bottles, plants, whatever, anything that can hurt the sharp child. Objects the, uh, sharp maybe. objects, maybe. Yes, anything in the area you remove, clear the vicinity. Mm. You also need to make sure that if the child is wearing like a shirt that is buttoned up to the top or a tie. You need you to release the all, button. Yes, you loosen all tight clothing. You loosen all tight clothing because the child can now um, you know, get bluish from the tightness if it gets tighter then you also need to make sure that if the child vomits you try and just not you're not dig, 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 digging your fingers deep down you're just clearing out the mouth a bit so that if he vomited he doesn't now choke or aspirate but that's also why you put him in that position so that he's in that position he can't actually swallow back even the tongue that parents are worried about when they put a spoon if the child is lying in that position the tongue can't fall back the tongue will always stay the way it's supposed to be, so that's another thing you can do. Then you need to take a soft cloth and put behind the child's head so that when the child is having the jerky movements and hitting the head, the head is on a soft um, surface. Fabric. Yeah, so that way the child doesn't hit his head and then give himself a head another. trauma. Um, other things you need to do are call for help. Now, we don't live in, a, in an environment where we have emergency services that can actually come to you, right? But in an ideal situation, if we had that, you just call 911 or whatever the emergency number would be, and then you can help with be on its way. But since we don't have that, you probably most times need to wait out the seizure and then run to the nearest hospital with the child. Make sure, okay, when the child recovers, you leave the child in that position. It's called the recovery, left lateral position. There's a way to actually position the child so that when the child recovers, the child is breathing. So you check to make sure the child is still breathing. Most important things you need to do are note the characteristic of the seizure. So you need to be sure that the child, you need to know if the child pulled or peed on himself after. You need to know if the child lost consciousness or just went to sleep or woke up after. You need to note, most importantly, the time, uh, how long the, uh, the convulsion lasted, yes. because that gives the doctors an idea of what to do when you get to the doctors. If the child had one or more seizures, you need to also note those. Uh, those are the important things, because once you come in, those are the things we're going to ask you. How long was it? Um, what happened? Did the child suddenly tell you, um, I feel like... I'm hearing sounds or I'm seeing the lights, you know, things like that. Those are the questions your doctors are going to ask. So if you know to note those things, it helps you be better prepared when you get into the, the, hospital. the hospital setting. Yes. The thing is, you can't really say which child is predisposed to having a convulsion um, when the child has a fever. You can only tell that it usually happens between six months to five years, and then it's higher in children between 12 to, eight, 12 to 18 months of age. Okay. That's the peak incidence. So what we advise parents is when your child has a fever, the first thing you should do is, I personally tell my patients to have a thermometer at home okay. and to have ibuprofen or paracetamol syrup at home. Preferably okay. for me, preferably paracetamol is a bit milder. Um, but just have any of them at home so that once you touch the child and you feel the child is warm or you notice your child isn't as active as he usually is, the next thing you can do is actually check the temperature. Once you check the temperature and it is above, it's 37.5 and above, which is what will tell you that the child is having a fever, you can now give some them, give the paracetamol to bring down the temperature and then proceed to the hospital to get help. Like we said, um, when a child has a febrile convulsion, it's the fever causing it. So what a lot of parents make the mistake uh, oh, a lot of parents make the mistake of giving the paracetamol, the temperature comes down, and then they go, go on about their day. I mean, the child is fine, basically. Okay. But usually, 
fever is a symptom of something else going on. So the sooner you find out what the cause is, the sooner you can get the fever out of the way and then really move on with your life. Okay. So it's better to take the child to the hospital, let the child get tested, figure out what the problem is, and then take it from there. The other thing is, if your child has ever had a febrile convulsion before, the tendency for him to have more um, or have another one becomes Increased. higher. Yeah, okay. because they are the children who have had one before, the risk is higher in them to have a repeat. So for such parents, it's very important to make sure that these things are in place so that once you realize your child is having a fever, you react first. You don't wait for the child to have a convulsion and then you have the added burden of trying to... Um, deal with that instead of having just nipped it in the bud earlier. Well, thank you so much, um, Dr. Onfon. So, viewers out there, you've heard all the dangers we do to ourselves when we have convulsions, when our babies have convulsions. In, in trying to help, we may actually be killing these babies. So most of the time you're saying that it's not even the convulsion that will kill these babies. It's what we try to do to save yes. these babies. More often than not, the trauma or the damage comes from what was done. So you have a parent who forced the spoon into the child's mouth and then the child starts bleeding and then now aspirates or chokes on the blood. I've seen a situation whereby the parents were trying to help and they mixed palm kernel and something else. I can't remember what it was. And then force fed the child. During the period of trying to force feed the child the concoction to stop the convulsion, the what they force fed the child went into the lungs right. instead of the stomach. And the child now basically aspirated on that. And by the time the child got to us, we now had to deal with lungs that were now compromised. That actually extended the child's hospital stay compared to if I, if I caused like major damage because the child was off, had to be on oxygen for a while. A lot of complications came up that really wouldn't have been there if we had just done Broke these the simple child. things. Yes, exactly. They had just done that. So more often than not, what we've seen is that children who are exposed to the wrong practice end up with more morbidity or a worse off situation when they come into the hospitals. All right. Thank you so much. So you've heard it, convulsion is not a spiritual disease, especially in children from between the ages of six months and five years. Every child with a fever at that age is entitled to one or two convulsions. What it means is that you have to take care. Take your child to the hospital where the, where the child will be treated for whatever has caused the, the fever that caused the convulsion. Okay? Don't try giving anything. They said if you rub pumpkin oil or any oil thing on the skin, it co clogs the, the pores of the skin. So... The, the patient, the child cannot cool, and physics taught us that evaporation causes cooling. When you stop the evaporation, the child cannot cool. When you force anything into the mouth or you pour some liquid, the child is not conscious at that, chi at that time, so the child cannot really swallow. It may just go into the lungs, which is just open for the child to breathe, and then you cause more problems. So in trying to save the child, you've killed the child. The child will not die from that conversion. It will not spoil the brain. It will not destroy anything. It's just a reaction from the fever. Take care of the fever, you've taken care of the child. If you have questions on this or you want to say more on this, just go to theafricaner.com and you get all you need. Ask your questions, say what you have to say, let the discussion continue on the site. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.